Alright, so Amazon Domain Sharding Solutions Board of Images. Your speaker is Kim Kaiser. Uh, the developer working from a user's perspective, Kim has a very career in delivering information and content of all types to the global audience. Her first program was written on Punch Tape. Does anybody know what Punch Tape is? <laughs> That's how you know I am. Uh, and she has a stop learning new programming languages throughout her career in engineering and information technology. She has a BS in chemical engineering and a BS in chemistry from Purdue University, which qualifies for the work at WordPress apparently. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, sense. Uh, and she's worked for several Fortune 500 companies. Uh, she's been creating websites since I've worked on the internet and now works for small <laughs> medium sized companies doing a lot of WordPress integration. So please welcome to the next yeah, that out will come at him. Um, I guess you have to be from a certain time period for your call, and yeah, this is that out will work at um. So, I'm going to talk to, to you today about um, an application that I've worked on for a company called Tan Celebrations. And Tan Celebrations is based in New Jersey, and they are a company that places videographers and photographers and DJs and officiants at weddings. And although there's only about five permanent staff people at Enchanted Celebrations, they um, put, put their um, contractors in hundreds of weddings every year, primarily during the, the summer months out in the area, New Jersey area. So when you give a talk like this, you always want to tell a story. And so I have to ask myself, am I going to tell this story from the point of view of the developer? Or am I going to tell the story from the point of view of the user or the people who are paying for the program, but really I'm going to try to mix it up and show you a little bit about, um, you know, how you come in as a developer and solve problems. Um, some of my training before I became a WordPress person, I worked at Dow Chemical and I um, was trained in and taught consulting skills. And consulting skills teaches you how to go in and be a, a, a useful consultant, a consultant that, that people listen to and come back for. And a lot of times when you get involved in a project, especially if you're hired as a freelancer, you're going to see what they call the presenting problem. So people are going to come to you and say, this doesn't work. And it's very easy to get focused on trying to solve that problem and not be in a position where you can open it up to really understand um, what's the real What's really going on here? Are we really solving the right problem um, versus just you know solving the problem that people see on the outside? So I'm going to talk about this application that they have in a chance celebrations called the event car. And event cars are a custom post type. And what they do is they provide perpetual posting of the thousands of images that are generated when you have one of these weddings. Now, when it used to be that you took uh, photographic film, you would take hundreds of pictures. But when the digital revolution came around, when digital people go and film weddings now, they're generating thousands of pictures. And there are places that will host pictures from events. They typically will take them down after 30 days or 60 days. And Enchanted Celebrations realize that people like to come back like a year later and look at their images. And they like to share them as well. We use this as a marketing tool because, as you'll see, each event car is linked to a location where a wedding happened. So when the marketing people are talking to someone who's considering to hire um, a photographer, they'll say, well, where are you getting married? They'll say, oh, we're getting married at Regalos in a certain city in New Jersey. And they can go into their event cars, Sir, boom, and come up and say, well, here we go. We have a wedding that we did at Vergellis, and here's all the great pictures that we took of the wedding right there at Vergellis. In addition to that, these um, images that we host have all sorts of links to social sharing. You can share pictures from your wedding on your Facebook or whatever, and the link that you have will bring you back into the application, into the light box that opens to show you the image. So, when you have thousands of images, just getting a link back to a page that has thousands of images isn't very useful. So it's that deep linking and some of the functionality that we have in the event cards that became a complication for how they worked. So 
Let's see. Let's take a look at an event card. Katie and Jake's wedding. This is um, works really well for SEO for these folks because they do hundreds of weddings a year, and every single wedding that they shoot, they put a post out that has that information. So it talks about the event, it talks about where it happened and the location. So they get a lot of SEO out of this. It's not something that they have to think of. What am I going to write about for a blog post? They post for every single event. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that we get into this section where you have like a print sheet that you see when you come after a photographer. And each one of these load with photographs. And you click on this. The, the light box overlay here is the foo, foo box overlay. Like I say, I really like it because the links that you put on social media will take you back exactly to this view of this image on this page. And that is something that is much more user friendly than just jamming it back to a page with thousands of images. And you can see a little bit of the the work that's kind of happened along the way here. Um, each one of these sections here is for a different point in the process here. We even have groom pics. So we have pictures of the groom, just the picture that you want to share on your social media site. So we, one of the things that, that um, we did initially, what I did initially, was just to try to divide it up. That's a lot of images to try to download at once. Let's divide it up into different sections. That didn't seem like enough, so let's divide it into two sections. We'll have bride one and bride two. But um, when I came to work on this project, it really had an issue with the performance. Um, it just it just really didn't work very well. Even though we're using masonry, the JavaScript masonry plugin to load the images as you scroll down the page. The reality is that um, in 2015, the event cards we loaded up two million images into those cards. In 2016, it was 10 million images. In 2017, it's 23 million images. So we're talking about some really intense image uploading and presentation. This isn't an application where people come back again and again and again and look at the same images. Frankly, you're probably not going to look at these images multiple times, but when you come and you look at it, you've got your grandma on her God knows what computer that she's got, and you got your aunts. And so the range of users that we had was, was large, and we did have to support people had some older equipment because some of the older people in our in our user group just don't have real screen and fast equipment. So I'm going to talk today about these three techniques that I use to make this application actually work. Domain sharding, dynamic image coding, and then how we pull, put it all together with the Amazon services. And it's a lot more than just the S3 that we're using. So domain sharding. Now this is a technique that some people are familiar with, some people consider it to be old school um, with HTTP2. It's, it's not as effective, but domain sharding is a situation where instead of downloading all of your assets from one domain, you can, you can download them from multiple domains because browsers typically will give six simultaneous connections. And so if you have 4,000 images, and you're taking up six images at a time, it, essentially the, the browser finds out. So this only shows two images at a time, two and two and two and two. But the reality is, for most modern browsers, it's about six, six, six. With domain sharding, what you do is you set up C names to alias your domain because browsers don't care about the IP address. They're only looking at the fully qualified domain name. So shard1.enchantedcelebrations.com and shard2.enchantedcelebrations.com, as long as they all point back to the same folder, I can serve images up. 
So instead of serving them six at a time, I can serve multiple batches of images at a time. Like I say, a lot of people say this is old school. Just an idea of what this looks like. Here are three of the image links, and I highlighted in blue the fact that they all are enchanted celebrations, but we use some, some words to kind of help make it like brides, photos, fun photos, embrace, extraordinary, some of the words that they use. So that is essentially what a sharded link, a shard system looks like. Your links have different subdomains, they all resolve to the same location, so they're all able to pull that image out from any one of these main domains. The pros and cons of domain sharding is number one in the cons, there's time required for the DNS lookup. So there, it, it, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. If I have two domains, I don't get it twice as fast. If I have three domains, I don't get three times as fast because there's that time required for the TCP and for the domain lookup that does degrade it. HTTP2 protocols, um, secure protocols, they are replacing domain sharding as a way to speed things up because they don't make the connections in the same way. They don't have the same kind of browser limitations. And number three is website modification. So if you want to use this technique, you do have to do some editing on some existing code that you have. But on the plus side, it, it still works. <laughs> and I'll show you some data. This still works. We saw a 40% increase in page loading time with sharding our resources from our content delivery network. And for us, for the thousands of small images, this is ideally suited. We're not downloading large images. These aren't the production images that you're going to eventually buy in large format. We do deliver that digitally, but these are for these thousands of images to show on these pages. And um, it turned out sharding it's out there and it still looks like a good option. So here is some actual waterfall data from a test that I did. So I created a page that had 1,092 images on them. And I looked at the waterfall. And you can see in this first waterfall, this is the not sharded example. And as it's downloading all of these images, you can see six, 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 six. So you can really see that simultaneous number of downloads. That your browser, it's your browser that wins this, not the sender. But you know, to keep one domain from coming in and just you know monopolizing your browser. When this is a test showing a situation where we had um, three domain shards, and you can see in here that we've increased. And as it turned out, it's about, it's about 40%. If this is, uh, I think I counted it up, but it's almost exactly percentage-wise what we saw. So you really can see it right there in the waterfall that this is, this is actually working. And I did more than four tests, but this is um, a compilation um, of that data and showing some averages. And with no shard, our 1,092 image page, Loaded up between 60 and 80 seconds. So this is not a, this doesn't load up instantly. There's nothing about this that's instant, and people understand that when they come to look at them. Two domains, a little better. We found that for us, three three domains to shard these images from three subdomains um, gave us our best performance. Typically, we're under 40 seconds to load that page. As you go up and try over five domains, now you get into this situation where the time it takes to look up the DNS is degrading it and you're not really getting any bang for your buck there. So the good news was that sharding still works. It seems to work really well for this particular application. So great. So we started up some domains and we declared victory and then the photo editor started creating event cards and our photo editor group is contracted as well. And I find that in my job, you, you really don't have a lot of ability to put rules on people who are creating content. 
that's like the tail trying to wag the dog. And in most cases, that doesn't work really well. So um, let me show you this code here. Um, yes, now I go back. So this is, and I have a GitHub page if you want to see some code. This is just a really simple example of how you can shard code. And I'm showing over here, if I have a string that's just a variable that contains that big, long code of all these links, I'm just doing a simple explode. I'm going to explode that long string of all those links in it at the www. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to put that string back together with my own domain names. And in this case it's three, so I just go through and iteratively go through and I use this if it's divisible by three, if it's a bride, if it's divisible by two, then I give it photos, and if it's not divisible by either of those, I give it fun photos. And so I'm able to take my content and chart it up. And so that's what we did originally with the content. Where can you put this in? It's best if you do this when you save your code because you don't want to create multiple subdomain versions of these images for caching reasons. So you all, you could shard it at the time when content is loaded. You could put a filter in and shard the code right when it loads to the page. We found it was better to shard the code as we were saving it to the custom host. So looks great, shard it up. This is what a event card creation looks like. You come to the custom posts, you add some text, you've got some custom fields, and then the old method was they actually took a folder and slid it up into this content box that we created. We have content boxes for top picks, and bride, and groom, I'm just showing you the top. I didn't even know you could do this. And you can go to a folder on your website and grab it and slide it right up into that content area. Sounds great. But, you slide it up and then you go get a cup of coffee because the thousands of images take a long time. And then when you come back from your coffee, you see all of these various, um, you know, depending on what day you're in, it's scripted out, it's timed out. So, although the front end of being able to show the pictures you know, we're ready to declare victory. It, it, in reality, was they could only create two of these cards a day. And in the busy wedding season, they have dozens of events every weekend. So if we were in a situation where we just simply could not create these, could not run the images through the editor in this way. So that brought me to the second part of this, which was instead of uploading the images, that way, we're just going to create the links dynamically. We know what they need to look like. We know where they're pointed to. Instead of bringing them in through that way, we're just going to go in and write some code and just generate the map. Now, I wasn't able to control how many images the photo editors would put in, but I was able to get them to sequentially number them and to give me the starting and the ending number for each one of those sections. So all the bride pictures are image 200 to 400, the groom pictures are 401 to 500, so I was able to do that for the folder editors to generate a, fo a, a folder with all the images sequentially ordered, and they also each have a file name that starts with four letters, and then the acronym here is, is um, that's the file, and then an acronym for the images. So with a very few pieces of information, now when they go to this event card, they put in their content, and they come over here and put in the two pieces of information that identify where these files are going to be found eventually, a folder, or in our case, we'll show you it's a bucket name, and then an individual acronym for each type of a wedding. And then over here, they can come in and fill in the start and the end for each one of these sections of pictures. So we went from taking you know, hours to do one event card to the situation now where they can actually put all the information in, upload the images, and by the time they're done, it's ready to go. 
So, as you saw, our strategy to upload those images through the WordPress system was not feasible because of the, the number of images, the fact that it would completely bog down their inner office internet system. They actually had Comcast come out and put in a bigger single user pipeline wire into their office to try to make that work. At the end of the day, the crunching that WordPress does, the number of images it generates in the background when you upload images through the content editor is just too much for this application. So what I did was I went over to, to Amazon Services. And so we had already used an offload plugin to offload our images and take them up into um, S3. And the way that plugin works is you actually put your images into WordPress in the normal way. And then there is a, a script that runs in the background with a third party who provides the plugin, and they actually move your images up into Amazon. They replace the links um, in your media library, and they make that work. So we had already moved into using Amazon as the repository for these images. And in addition to that, we when, when I created the shard, I'm not going to talk much, too much about CloudFront, but CloudFront is the, the front for showing your images that are on Amazon. So if you store your images in an Amazon bucket, that bucket actually has a URL address. And then so you can show your images directly from the bucket through CloudFront with that address. But our, the third thing I want to bring into this is how we use Lambda, which is another Amazon service to handle the image manipulation. And Amazon Lambda, if you're not familiar with it, is a service kind of like um, Heroku, which basically if you have code that you want to run, which you don't have to have your own server, you don't have to manage any of the back end to make that piece of code run. You can run it on Lambda, it'll bring up the resource you need to run the code, and you're done. And so I said, how are we going to replace the image manipulation that happens in WordPress and take that offline and do that somewhere else? Before we looked at Amazon Lambda, we looked at doing it on our own server. We were on a VPS or in WordPress engine now. The problem with the VPS is that there are too many people doing the uploading. And we couldn't go into all the different machines that we're using to upload images and get everything um, resolved and set up so that every machine that we had was doing the image manipulation because of course there's a lot of image magic and other things you can put on the server that do a lot of image work. But our problem was we had too many machines and not enough people with the training to get that set up and running. So I started to do what any good developer does and that is Google. <laughs> How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? And lo and behold, thank you to Jean-Christophe Lavocat. There it was. The image conversion using Amazon Lambda and S3 and Node.js. It was just, oh my god. And what Jean describes is something that's not, it's not new. There are other people who describe parts and pieces of this. Amazon itself and their web services even talks about how to do this. But Jean provided me the starting point of a node.js file that would do the image conversion. I can take my images and upload the large size, and the node.js script will create a center optimized thumbnail, and it will also create a optimized larger size image that you see when you click and you get that light box to open up. So a little bit about what it looks like in Amazon, in the Lambda. So I have this script, and I'll show you just a little bit of it. The full script that I'm using is included in my GitHub page, so if you want to go in and look at it, that's great. So I've uploaded the script, and then I set a trigger. And you can see over here that you can add lots of triggers, and one of the triggers you can add is if something goes into a bucket. So I have a situation now where 
whenever content is loaded into the watching the bucket EC weddings, this trigger immediately takes those images, does the work, thumbs them, full sizes them, puts them in another bucket on Amazon that I serve my images out of. And so people, my photo editors can now go in and just simply upload the entire image folder and by the time they get over to the page to look at the event card, it's there. So we just went from hours and hours and hours to literally seconds. And this is with, with, with Amazon Lambda looking at that bucket and automatically doing it. So just a little bit of what this node.js file is. I've never done anything with Node. I do a lot with JavaScript, but I've never done anything with Node. But it was pretty easy. The, the first node that's that I have on GitHub has all of the, um, the, the logging. So there's lots of logging in the script to make sure things did what they were supposed to do. Did it see the folder? Did it find the web file name? So it really went down and I used that to develop this because I'm a big trial and error person. So a big trial and error developer. So with a lot of nodes and everything, I was able to pretty, pretty easily get this working. It uses image magic. And at the beginning of your code, you just pull in a couple of those libraries. I get the name of the folder that was uploaded. And so that information that I eventually have to put in, I don't have to put anything in here. It knows the folder name I uploaded. It reads that acronym for each one of the images. And then I go in and I set two different image, size, image sizes with it. It streams those images back out to the output bucket into two folders with a wedding name thumbs, wedding name large. And so there I have my images that are ready to go. The final bit of this is to make that bucket on Amazon available on the internet with a web address. In our case, this is where we did our C names. So I have, um, I'm quitting it over here, but I have uh, a distribution here that points to a bucket, and way over on the right, second one down, you can start to see the word bride, and I'll show you in more detail, that I created a distribution, I told it what bucket to look in, and then I gave it these, these awesome alternate C names. So you can, all from Amazon right here, set it up for the C names that you want to use, looking at that output bucket right there. And then I won't show it, but I went over to my DNS, and then I created these, these three C names for botanicelebrations.com domain. So using three of the Amazon Web Services, the Lambda and the S3, and CloudFront, we were able to, to really um, take the image manipulation completely out of the WordPress loop, and yet still bring it back in so that um, it really looks seamless. There's no, if, if you didn't know what was going on and you just looked at the source code on the page, um, you would never know. There's no extra scripting involved on the page. I don't have to pull any libraries when that page downloads. It all happens behind the scenes. So putting it all together, this is the process now. Have our photo editors. I'm using this product here, Cloudberry Explorer, which is a really nice tool for being able to FTP upload into Amazon Buckets. So they open up their Explorer, click that folder there, and just slide it over, and, and that's done. They are done. Once it gets into the watch bucket, Amazon Lambda, Little script takes over, comes back, puts it in another bucket. I have CloudFront, which is serving up those images across a number of C names, and then it finally it generates the event card there on Janice Lumbers. And I'm done. And I'd like to acknowledge and Alex Harris, DJ, and Janice Celebrations is his company. I'd like to acknowledge Edward Jenkins, who I don't know, but who wrote the original event card plugin. 
Jean Christine, Jean Christophe, who, um, whose lambda code and method really helped me to see what the end uh, uh, result would be. And then finally, um, I have a GitHub here where I put up um, some of the coding for the event cards and as well as that node.js script that will come your images. And now I'm ready for questions. Or not. <laughs> I was going to ask you why you didn't just use a CPN, but that doesn't solve the upload issue. So exactly. that it's a round question. Well, we have the CPN. So we had implemented, you know, an offload uh, procedure where all of the images were being served off the CDN and then we even, you know, put a shard in place so it was coming from the CDN with different names, but um, it still wasn't, it still didn't solve the problem because, and this is where this was never brought to my attention as a developer when I started working on the project. It was all about, oh, the, the brides come and they can't upload their picture, or they can't look at their picture because it's timing out, I'm doing script errors, they're calling me on the phone. I mean, let's face it, a lot of clients are difficult to work with. But there's a no television show called Lawyer Zillas. <laughs> there's no television show called Dr. Zillas. But there's a television show called Bride Zillas, and there's a reason for it. I'll tell you, I used to build chemical plants for a living, and working in the bridal industry is way more high stakes than building chemical plants. So, um, yes, that was the thing. We had a the presenting problem was the bride's users couldn't use this, but when we expanded it and started to gather more data from the photo editors who were actually using it, that's when they brought in the, the feedback. Okay, we're just having trouble. With all those error messages that the users are seeing, we're seeing them too when we try to create the event cards. So. I have a question because um, I'm very impressed by you know, how hard you worked through and what you've achieved with getting over this very challenging, this challenge that somebody put in front of you and they were one kind of yours. I wonder whether, first of all, whether you like doing, you know, work with lots of, you know, I don't know, objects, photos, whatever, and whether you've seen this opportunity to sort of be known for doing this and specialize, or um, whether you just look at this as just yet another client challenge and this is how it always is, it's always been a challenge? Well, I know that there is, um, you know, a need for some of these things, and it, it bothers me to read, you know, people, you know, cuckooing about some of these ideas and things that still work very well. Um, I'm not personally into the mega image industry, but I can see that, you know, with it, with, with digital photography, it's just exploded. You know, so, you know, it used to be if you were selling products online, um, you paid somebody a lot of money to produce a few photographs of your product, actually go to the studio with the right lighting and you just the right, you know, and if you were lucky, all of your products were shot similarly, so on your website they all look consistent, and so that, you know, the time and the energy required to get images was, was just huge, and that is just one of the biggest paradigms that I've seen is, is the explosion of images in this kind of content because you can, mm -hmm. in this case. And, um, so yeah, I know that Alex has talked about, you know, if other people are interested in this technology. He's in um, New Jersey, so I wouldn't be, um, you know, maybe any way photographers <laughs> who would want to use this technology in Michigan, there's not going to be any competition. Um, the business where you have to hook up with the Amazon services, I know it can be a little difficult. But really, I was really, really happy with the quality of the Amazon help. If you have an account with Amazon in a, with an Amazon console, and you go into their help documents, they, they know that. And so the help that they give you is actually um, for you. 
Someone will say, it won't just say, oh, go here and put in your whatever. It'll say, go here and put this in, because it's your login. It's the name of your, um, you know, um, Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. All the all the Amazon things that can, can can be very confusing. There is a description of how to do this pretty much exactly in in the Amazon um, descriptions. There, um, I'm very much trial and error. So I saw that John had this article that said you could do it, and so that was about all we needed to see. Without that, I have to say I'm not sure that I could have solved this problem for them. Because, um, and that's something you don't want to tell the client. Like, what you're trying to do is impossible. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's not impossible, but for them, is it, is it, is it practical? Is it cost effective? They pay $7 a month of Amazon. In Amazon, Amazon costs, in Amazon costs, it's $7 a month for these images. Now, they're not the full. You know, and they're not the 40 megabyte pieces. It, it doesn't keep any of the original images? Well, it, it, it has that one bucket still. Well, because these are not the production images that are taken, you know, to, to, to build the, the albums and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so these are some of the already resized them for web, and then we're just putting them in there, and then they're, we're optimizing them again. Well, no, they're being resized for the web because. Uh, this, you know, this is the tail wagging the dog. You know, one of the first questions when we started this was, well, if we're going to leave WordPress as the image manipulator, I need you to give me um, some thumbnail. I want you to give me a full size and a thumb version that's centered, because we already, and I'm sorry to say that some photo editors couldn't do that. Yeah. And even though they were photo editors, and that's kind of what they did, you know, to go back to them, and there's a lot of them. That's another thing. How many people are you going to try to tell, well, you need to be doing your job this way? And so finding the tool that would completely eliminate the need for them to do this. And it's also not not um, value added. You know, they're there to process the images, to get them out, to make the wedding albums, to make the videos of the weddings. Um, this is a side deal marketing for purposes like that, and so our ability to completely separate that out was, was really fundamental. And otherwise, I really don't know what, I think we would have just ended up having to go to more and more tabs, or locking it down. In fact, we have had some, some ability here to lock it down in case you're on low, um, you know, bandwidth, the connection, we just lock it down, and then we just have to show them all. <laughs> because originally it was like, well, if everybody puts about 200 images in each tab, that would be fine. So, you know, two weeks after we get the solution, you know, somebody's put 4,000 images in one tab. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it just, that's, that's where it really just, you know, unless we're going to get in to try to control what the people are doing to make it easier for the developer, which really isn't the way it needs to work. Because we need to find the solutions developers that make it easy for the people who are photo editors to do their job. Quick question about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there, there's people come up with their cameras and dump in that stuff. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you mentioned that they have numbers um, of ranges, like they know, like these are the brides, one and two. So are they pretty much organizing all the photos ahead of time and then bringing those in, or like, what, the, the first question that came to mind was like, so they, they get all the photos and um, the FTP client, you know, they're like, cool, everything is uploaded, good. Is there a notification like um, your trigger ran and then, you know, there's something wrong with it, but then upload all their photos again, or they, can they easily go and just, oh, that one didn't. Um, well, in this case, if there's something really, usually if there's something, they've done something wrong. If they've done something wrong, then the best thing to do is to just delete the buckets. Re-upload it because really nothing bad really happens with all the Amazon stuff. Right. If it's not there for some reason, they've got the wrong numbers, um, then they just go back and do it again. The, the original images that come from the photographers and the videographers, we actually are using a different system for that. Um, completely different. 
say upload uh, we're using smart file. Which is a smart file is a, is a place that will host, um, not host, but an image, uh, a content storage for smart file. And we have um, on smart file now a few hundred terabytes of um, images. So what happens is, is the photographers shoot the, shoot the wedding, they upload their content to smart file. And then the photo editors, as they're ready to work on each job, they download to their working um, workstations each, each, each job one at a time. And it's their job to look through the images and select the ones that would be in these event cards. So that's, the, that's what they do. They select that group of images and then put them in a folder and sequentially them. <clears throat> um, we're using Amazon S3 initially. You said we came on the number, or was there a comparison between other cloud services? Um, they were using their own server when I started. They were doing all this in house, and you can see that that was that was going to work for even a few more months because of the volume and the size. So we didn't look at anything other than Amazon. Because this company had already actually worked with some other companies that did this, and those um, companies wouldn't keep them up there perpetually. So they were working with some third party companies who would put them up for 30 days, or 60 days, or 90 days, but in a fairly short time, they were gone. And so they wanted something that would be there for a year, or two years, or whatever. You wanted to come back and look at them, so they're there. And then, like I said, we use them as a marketing tool to be able to show, you know, the brides. Here's the beautiful images that you could have at your wedding at, you know, um, the Blue Heron Golf Course. Because all these event places are catered for weddings, and so they have nice places. You know, here's the the gazebo, so here's the picture of the bride in the gazebo, and things like that. So they're really able to go right in. And they're not responsible for which um, event venue to select. So they don't have a have a dog in it. They have, they have, they're not in that game. But for somebody who goes to that location, they want to be able to show them exactly what it would look like, how beautiful it could be for your wedding right there. And uh, it apparently really does the trick because they're just, like I said, 20 million images, and um, who knows what it'll be. Old dog, new trick, sharding, I can tell you that people who don't know what it is don't know what you're talking about. And that was kind of my click baby um, yeah. title. <laughs> I I it. It. Because, you know, we say, oh, we're going to do a shard. I'm like, uh, what? Shard? <laughs> no, not that word. <laughs> not that word. <laughs> well, thank you very much.